All right, guys, and we're back here on the X 24 hour. Woo! Uh, uh, with steady hands, Sean. How you doing? Good, how you feeling? Good. After I'm feeling you? great. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. You a little tired after little that tired. set? <laughs> no, this is definitely the earliest I've ever played Steady Hand song, so... Really? Yeah. <laughs> so does it feel awkward? No, it's not awkward. It's great. I can be in bed by, like, four. <laughs> <laughs> so how does this feel, the the gathering of people that came to see you perform? It, it felt like a zoo. It was cool. <laughs> like the caged animal? Yeah, it was funny. There was just a bunch of uh, glass and... But some friends came, so I was waving to people, and you know, awesome. it's fun. That is awesome. We had a, a massive fan join us in studio here and to give us a question. Can we get your name? Hi, I'm Asia. I'm representing the um, student-run record label here on campus. Awesome. Awesome. Um, What's your question, Asia? So I was just wondering, since you're a multi-instrumentalist, um, which do you like better, being a front man and a singer or a drummer? Uh, I mean, it's kind of a cop-out. Uh-huh. But I definitely uh, enjoy them both very much in different ways. Okay. Um, it's a lot of fun to jump around and be a singer mm-hmm. and, you know, play songs that you wrote and kind of be in charge of the whole show. Okay. Um, and interacting with the audience is one of my favorite things. But uh, sometimes you just don't want to do that. So <laughs> it's great to be the drummer and just chill out in the back and, like, you know, talk to the crew while the show is going on. like <laughs> Have no responsibilities? Yeah, I, I FaceTime my friends when we play sometimes. <laughs> That's great. awesome. That's so That's cool. That's cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, I was wondering, you were saying uh, your dog matters to you a lot. Does he go around with you on tour when you tour? No, uh, no. Uh, um, he's, he, he's, good, he's good with the car, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm kind of torn um, about people taking their dogs on tour. Because I think, it, like, in the right situation, it's perfectly healthy. But I don't know. I feel like my dog, his personality would kind of freak him out. He'd yeah. He'd be in a different place every day. I don't know hey. about your guy, but my, my pug, my oldest one, if he passed his last year, hated cars. Just oh, okay. loathed cars. So I couldn't take him anywhere. Like, I, I had to drive from Montana to New Jersey, and it was just brutal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it depends on the dog, and I don't think my dog would, would dig that very much. <laughs> That's he true. likes his, his hood. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, so what made you want to be a musician? That's what I've been wondering. Like, what, oh. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've always been into uh, art mm-hmm. uh, in terms of, like, just, like, drawing. My mother was an artist, like, in um, terms of, like, comedy, video stuff. And it was really, like, you know, when I became a teenager and I got into punk and the punk scene and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And really, I was just kind of it was really attractive to me that like people were making these amazing art that was reaching a lot of people, but Mm -hmm. it was all very homegrown and it didn't feel intimidating or um, pretentious at all. So it was kind of like, you know, when you're a young kid, like any other art, you just, all you see is what you see in the movies on TV. And then all (laughs) of a sudden I started, you know, through the internet and stuff like this, like small record labels. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, I could do this tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) My music gets to people. Yeah, oh, yeah boy. it does. It does. So uh, what are some of the, what is my thing? Uh, we all have those albums that you hear the first song, you have to play through. They, mm. they all vary to us. What are some of those albums to you? Like, what is a must-listen-to album? Ooh. Um, some of my f- favorite, uh, so my favorite record is um, the first I Am The Avalanche record. Um, all their records, I just love that band. <laughs> um, but, like, in terms of albums, um, I'm a huge fr- fan of... Uh, Titus Andronicus is the monitor. Okay. Mm. Um, that album's awesome. Um, Me without you, it's crazy, it's false, it's a lie, it's true, a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> uh, I love the album. Never can remember the title. Um, you know what? Probably Nebraska. Nebraska is a big one. Mm-hmm. Bruce. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many. And even now, like the last Pup album, the new Menzingers record, it's just like mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And do you still find yourself listening to a lot of their music? Uh, like newer bands? Yeah, newer bands. Yeah, yeah. Like nice. Most. I had to stop myself. I try to <laughs> cleanse myself every once in a while when I'm only listening to like friends mm-hmm. or like current bands or bands we tour with, and I'm just like, all right, don't listen to anything before 1980. <laughs> that's a, that's a tough, tough uh, move though. Trying it's to hard. listen to all, all that music, nothing before 1980. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, so what do you do to pass free time on tour when you're touring around? Uh, on tour. What is your hobby? Um, I really love. Uh, I love running. I go running. Wow, good yes. on you. Running's um, brutal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a cool way to see a city. That makes uh, sense. Just kind of get lost. Mm. Um, I really like podcasts, like um, stand-up podcasts, mm. improv That's podcasts. Awesome. Um, yeah. What podcast specifically? Um, so right now, um, I'm on two. Well, 
I was I'm always really into WTF, but I've listened mm-hmm. to most of it at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm listening right now to "You Made It Weird" with Pete Holmes. Uh, I know Pete okay, Holmes yeah. never listened yeah. to it. He he's he's awesome. Uh, I listened to the Chris Gethard episode on the way here because <laughs> I know Chris Gethard's always chilling around here. Um, so that one's a big one, and there's another one with Sean Harris from the band The Matches called mm-hmm. uh, You Don't Know Me, and it's like a songwriting podcast. Oh, oh nice. So a, that's my main rotation now. Very okay. Cool. Makes sense. Uh, can I just ask you more about your tattoos? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, like, so intrigued by, like, what's going on here. Sure. <laughs> yeah. um, just the one, like, the, there's a rose, like, on the side of his arm here. I'm just wondering, like, what um, what made you get that? Because it, it's so pretty. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that's my first tattoo. Um, and it was... It was it's got, you know, it's got Italian in it, and like, <laughs> which I never thought I had to explain to everyone what it means and stuff, which you know, I should have thought of beforehand. Also, I don't speak Italian, so it's a very first tattoo for a tattoo. But oh, I yeah. got that from my grandma. Um, um, so, yeah, that one it will, you know, fade eventually. I got to ask <laughs> the flamingo. What's up with the flamingo? The flamingo. Uh, I just love fl- flamingos. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, my, like, for, for Christmas this year, um, my wife, like, got this piece um, painted for me. Oh, by that's Mars. awesome. So, and then I got it tattooed. Um, wow. And yeah. The question is, how did you top that for Christmas? Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm good at gifts. Oh, okay. All I'm right. Really I was say, how do you top that? Because that's a pretty personal good gift mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Yes. Now the question is, when are you going to get a tattoo of your dog? I have one. Do you? Do yes. You? So do I. <laughs> I got that one uh, a little while ago. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. He couldn't care less. No, no. I always, a- I always ask mine. I'm like, man, when are you gonna return the favor? Get a tattoo of me, yeah. like on your belly. Come on. <laughs> Rub here. Yeah. Oh, that would perfectly be it. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Lord, what's going on? Oh, there we go. Um, Asia, did you you got another question? Do you have anything you want to ask? Um. Uh oh. Not that I can think of. <laughs> I mean. You seem pretty excited. Yeah, right? I am. I'm very excited. Uh, what's it like being on the road? Like being on tour for months on end? Is it rough? Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely the positives outweigh the negatives uh-huh. um, because it's you know it's a, a life that very few people get to have. Just you know traveling, seeing all these places, um, meeting all these people, and you kind of my favorite part about it is you know I'm fortunate where. I have these little pockets of kind of really good friends, family, like all over the world now um, that I get to see that you know, I never normally would. Um, That's awesome. You know, I never thought I'd be like, yes, I'm in uh, uh, like Columbus, Ohio. Like, I'm <laughs> so excited. But like I am because I like there's so many people there that I love. So It's like, different too, yeah. Yeah, it's and it, it gets rough, so it's nice to have so, the, uh, the home time when you have it. What small cities have you fallen in love with while on tour now? Um, small cities. Uh, so, well, I just got to say for the record, everybody rags on Florida. I love touring Florida. <laughs> I live there for I, so I'm long. I'm wearing a bathing suit the whole time, going swimming every day. So, like Orlando, it's not small city, but, like, I, yeah. love, I love playing around Florida. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, a lot of, like, just UK places. Like oh, L- London, that, Kingston, be- Manchester. Um Glasgow, Edinburgh, like I just love touring the UK. Well, to even have the chance to go international, that's yeah. that's got to be a dream right there accomplished. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's Definitely. that's really un- unbelievable. And it's like to, you know, like the last tour I was on, like we we did mainland Europe, and like you know, I was in Italy for one day. Oh, I didn't see anything, <laughs> but I was in Italy. But you were there. Like, I was in a park, and I was like, you oh, can okay. say you, you were could, there. Yeah. you can check it off. Yeah, I, didn't I was meet there, Francis guys. or anything, but I was in Italy. All right, so I have a very important question Uh-oh. for you. Um, so, the past few interviews have also said this. Do you believe a hot dog is a sandwich? Uh, no. I, no? That, no. I've never heard that argued. Yeah. No? Really? Yeah. We've That's had a couple weird arguments. Couple the arguments. The other one that, that was going around yesterday was taco, soft shell, or hard shell. Oh. Oh, that too, yeah. 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 And I mean... Uh, soft. I'm not, a, I'm not really on the taco revolution tip. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's probably good, especially if you're a runner. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> I just think it's like it's always like, oh, like one dollar tacos, and like you get it. I'm like, that's like one dollar worth of food. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's not that impressive. No, it's not. Um, my, I guess my question is, we all we're all somewhat of creatives here, but as Asia said, you're a multi instrumentalist. Do you ever find difficulty when it's time to create? When you'd want to sit down and think and make a piece? Oh yeah, of course. I mean. I'm a multi-instrumentalist, but I find difficulty playing those instruments <laughs> half the time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's it can be frustrating, but it's just kind of like, 
you go through these manic like you know you're on the super high of just like everything's coming out and then you don't write anything for for months and then you feel and you so lazy you're never gonna write anything again <laughs> and then it comes you know so as long as you're self-aware of that you can't beat yourself up too much that is true that is true. Yeah, right. Oh. Russ, do you have anything? I know uh, Russell Sorinaro is here with us. Hello. We are hanging out in uh, the live room. He was uh, helping me not curse. Word. <laughs> and you did great. Thank you. I only cut It's very two difficult songs. to not. <laughs> I got a few questions I guess we could get into if you're cool with it. Sure. So you're based in Philly right now. Where are you originally from? Like, where did you grow up? I am from New Jersey. Where, where specific? Uh, a town called Verona, New Jersey. It's in, uh, it's in North Jersey. Uh, okay. It's uh, by the Meat Locker. Oh, okay. Do okay. shows down there all the time? Everybody knows there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Did you ever hit up, like, the Starland and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. Too? Starland was my venue. Um, but I was, like, I would go to Starland a lot if I can get a ride. Sure. Or, or once I got a car, I like, could drive there. Um, but I was close enough to New York. It's kind of mm-hmm. like, ev- we we're lucky because every tour hits mm-hmm. New York. Right. So, um... And if you want to see them twice, I usually hit Philly, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I would just take the train into New York. And um, thinking back, I was really didn't know where I was going. Um, so I'm glad I made it out, but yeah, it was, it was a great place to grow up just because yeah. we had so many options. Any shows growing up that you went to go see and you're just thinking like, these guys are living the dream. I want to do this. Um, I try to think some standout ones. I mean, it was, it was more so like I went to the Starland shows and I saw a lot of bands there. I saw like, like no effects. I saw a Dropkick Murphy show. That was amazing. I got mono at a Dropkick Murphy show. Oh, that's and impressive. It wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't even smooching. I was just like, it was just so sweaty and gross. Yeah. And this was when Starland, you could smoke in there. It's like oh, just wow. disgusting. Um, but then it was like more so like the, the DIY shows I started to go to like VFW halls, um, like school of rock and South Hackensack Very cool. was a huge one for me. Meat locker. Was what? a new, Oh, Sorry. go ahead, man. Oh, was the New Brunswick scene kind of big back then? or You're not that old. <laughs> uh, uh, unfortunately, no, I'm not old enough, I think. I, I, know, I know that it, it picks up every once in a while, but I think right when I was growing up, it kind of had tailed off. Sure. And the venues, like I, I've been to the Court Tavern and saw some shows there, but I think there was a little bit of like it was trouble to get an all-ages show yeah. at the time. Yeah, it still is kind um, of. So I kind of missed out on that, but I think I just like missed it by a year or two. Well, you were in Philly at the exact right time. So yeah. yeah, that was very it, fortunate it was, for yeah, that. Yeah, it was blowing up, so that's awesome. <laughs> uh, what venues do you go around to in Philly usually? Like, I know Electric Factory's down there. That's one I love. Mm-hmm. I yeah, don't know why. I mean, we're we're so lucky in Philly. Um, like, I can get to Johnny Brenda's. I can take the 15 trolley from my doorstep, and it takes me to Johnny Brenda's. Wow. Um, so I love seeing shows there, the, the church, um, like Phil Mocha, um, like, you know, all the proper venues are just yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, Philly UT, has a Fillmore, ton of venues. Like, TLA out there. Like, TL, they just yeah. have tons of venues on top of them. Mm-hmm. I don't know any of the, uh, like, the northern Jersey venues, but I grew up down around South Jersey. So when you were, like, Philly area, I was like, oh, man, I know all those venues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, those are the ones I the know. The Troc. Is, some people oh, still play the Troc. The Troc still gets played. <laughs> Did you ever hit up Troc Zone? I did not know. Chalk Zone's a new, newer place. Is it's, it? It's bumping right now. Oh Where wow! Is it? yeah. cool. is that... It's like this house, but it's like really well known, like down cool. by Cape May in South okay. Jersey. Oh, okay. I think Thin Lips recently played there. Tiny Moving Parts is gonna play awesome. there. It's very. That's very the thing cool. in South Jersey. Awesome. There are a lot of those house venues. Like there's, I forget there was one. Uh, my buddy runs it. It's a legit house, but they have shows there. Like, oh yeah. It's wow. crazy. It blew my mind when I saw that. I was like, you can do that. He's like, the neighbors <laughs> don't like it, but yeah, you can do it. <laughs> I mean, that's in Philly. There's, there's three shows a night like, yeah, you know, it's yeah. Not, like, not even worth mentioning all the houses it's three that's three shows a night and every bar packed afterwards every bar. Yeah. <laughs> or not or they're just drinking at the house and <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. they have a safe the neighbors to probably don't like out. that either <laughs> no no yeah. so where can we get your music at sean mm-hmm. um all the usual suspects uh, yeah i, I know it's on yeah, spotify <laughs> spotify itunes i YouTube, saw the uh, what's stuff. the site the live album's on to that's donate. on my band camp okay uh, just okay. so i can have get the money directly um to the organization and then uh the record rude boys of bar rock you can get at lamo records um good listen I, i've been playing it all my out. my daughter and i as you've seen her running around here we actually listened to it on the way to campus today awesome. <laughs> so good listen good listen um yeah. thank you for your time sean sure thank thanks you so much, much for having me no yeah. sweat and everybody that was steady hands here on the x Woo. <laughs>